at one point they announced that they're working on the Straight Outta Compton movie. Uh -huh. And from what I understand, you wanted to be in the movie to play your dad. Oh uh, yeah, it would have been great, terrific. Yeah. You auditioned for the movie. Most definitely, a couple okay. of times. Uh huh. I was called back two or three times. Why do you think you didn't get the role? Because you look just like him. Ice Cube's uh, son, who also looks like Ice Cube, got the role, but yeah. you didn't end up getting the role. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a realist, you know what I mean? It's nothing people could take away. Um, I was, you know, it's told that you need the more polished actor at the time uh, to play it, the, the more, most important role. And I remember meeting with F. Gary Gray with Dr. Dre one time. And I, of course, you know, Dr. Dre goes all the way. He always, it's kind of like, you could tell him he's like in a deep stare and kind of like a, you know, because I, I can't blame him, but sometimes when I do while I walk in, I, I give you that feel, and I'm just, when you look at me, like, whoa, this is Eric's son. He looks just like him. So I was it, it definitely been told and appreciative of you saying, and I, it's always appreciative of somebody um, recognizing that. But uh, if Gary Gray asked me a question about um, all kind of things, weight, when he's sick, they want him to be smaller. Can I can transition to losing that much weight, which is a lot of people follow me now. I can bounce, bounce back, you know, look like, G.I. Joe to being daddy, <laughs> daddy shape. So that and will I be able to play the, the hospital part? This is what he personally asked me. Could you take that playing the deaf part? Um, and really, uh, yeah, I mean, my grandma always taught me there's nothing you can't put your mind to do. You know, so that's my, my mind state, but I understand where they were. Focal, so their focal points were and the things that they probably had, you know, a little sensitivity on. So, you know, I took it for what it was. I mean, an ice cube went, uh, did an interview where he said he felt that you weren't polished enough to play the role. Yeah. You, you heard the interview. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I remember that. I remember. Yeah. Would you agree, disagree? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not an actor, you know what I mean? But you're telling me to do a role that is pretty solid for me to knock down, you know right. what I mean? Uh, so, you know, and there was a flack about that, you know what I mean? A lot of individuals took a lot of flack about saying, hey, I felt this way. Hey, you feel like you disrespect your father, all that and the other, and it kind of bring a little bit of uh, tension that need, didn't need to be there between the both of us because he's a, he's a he's a good friend, he's a good mentor. You know, what I mean, I, I speak with him, you know, I meet with him, you know, often when he's in town. Um, cool with you know, know his son, his whole his whole actually Q Vision company. You know, what I mean, I'm very solid with since I was young. Um, so it was ignorant to me, but this, that's media. And I said to myself at the time, I said. When you play Boys in the Hood, were you an actor and were you polished? No, we all know that, you know what I mean? Just look at facts, you can ask John Singleton. It wasn't, you know, or a lot of, lot of table readings for it. But the character that you played fitted. You know, you're basically just playing your rap character. Right, Little O'Shea wasn't an actor either. You know what I mean? But they went through the, they went through the, the, the trials to, to get him polished to do that. Um, don't get me wrong, he did a great job. Right. I mean, do you feel that um, Ice Cube had the resources Most to, to put his that's, son that's through all the acting classes, and you may not have had the same level yeah, of resources? Yeah, but that's not that's not his that's not his his job to do. You right. know what I mean? But it's that's common sense. Yes, you know what I mean. His, his father is, you know, movie after movie, Cube Vision. You know, I'm doing box office movies. You know, now as we see, ride along too. You know, you switch from comedy to family from the street side, you know what I mean? You did the crossover, I, like I told the man. It's like, I, I, I you know what I'm saying? I, I respect your your legacy, you know what I mean? It's something that I would, I, I can mimic and sit there and try to do myself and want to get into movies. So it was a it was a good chance for me to do an unpolished act of an individual person that I'm playing that's not hard for me to do. You can ask his mama. You watched the film? Yeah, most definitely. I know that there were some discrepancies in the film. For example, uh, when Dre met with Tupac and he played him California Love, Tupac was recording Hail Mary, which came out way later. That came out on the Machiavelli album. And, you know, that was what, you know, my, my, my friend Edie from the Outlaws, yeah. he told me about that, like, beforehand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, another thing that, that seemed, uh, that from what I understand was not true, based on interviews with Cole and A7, was your dad having to move into some little three-bedroom house in the middle-class neighborhood and, and just, selling weed? Yeah. No, I, 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 I don't. 
You don't know about that? Don't quote me on that. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you said that, but you saw the movie. Yeah, I seen the movie. Yeah. He was living in the big mansion, and then suddenly right. they had him as a middle class shit. Right, exactly. Is that true? I, you, you I never, never saw that. You never went to his house like in the later in the later times? No, nah, I mean, I never saw that. I never seen him, and he never gave me no indication that he downgraded houses. Okay. So I can't say it either or. I mean, okay. the house I went to was a big, beautiful house, and yeah. he didn't say anything like, oh, man, it's all bad. I got to downgrade a house. He never said it to me. He must have been a secret. Which doesn't really make a lot of sense because he had Bone Thugs and Harmony and his own album, I think, went platinum. And he was still making money <laughs> off of, you know, the Death Row catalog and stuff like that. Why do you think that it was portrayed that your dad was broke near the end? Hollywood. Hollywood. Uh, you gotta have a, you know, uh, a moving storyline, even though you can ask me as a son, it's just unfair to a lot of people. It's like a lot, a lot of people I tell you, you know what I mean? Like, do you feel like it was portrayed right? Like, your accent is, yeah, I'm Eric Wright Jr., you know? So you're asking me, you know, if I feel it's like, oh, okay, like uh, Jerry Rice got beat in the Super Bowl with the 49ers. You're gonna ask your son, like, hey, do you think they PI just your dad? What? We should have won. We should have did this. Of course. So it's an unfair question, but realistically, what you asked me factually is very factually true. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just told you the story of when he had me come into the the, 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 the bathroom and ask him about the, the song, which is one of the fondest last times that we had together. And it was in the biggest house that, you know, daddy, we come to the house all the time. This house is it, you know, behind last. a gated, you know, gated community in, in, in Woolen Hills on the top of a hill away from society. Right. You know, it took a, a 21 mile fond memory while I'm up here, my mom saying it. Is sorry to say it, but dad wasn't out the box. We used to ride around that hill, and at nighttime, we used to ride around. He used to sit there and say, hey, give me that box, and he'd pull out a pellet gun. So I bet you I could hit a mountain lion driving. <laughs> you know, he was just a jokester. But no, so not true. Not you true. know, he was, he was in the biggest house that, that, as a child, every house that I went through to live with him was in. Um, and if everybody knows the history, even the scene where he drives by the Chronic album, he was getting paid off of the Chronic album. It's just facts. Yeah. It's just Dre Day made Easy's payday. It's just not even just we're not even just talking about the rap. We're talking about the facts of what is contract things that are do going on. He yeah. was making money off of it more than the individuals that actually did it, um, or as much money. And um, so. No, that was not true. No, he was not selling dope at the, out the house, you know, or we to make himself benefit. I worked for Ruthless Records for some years, and I, I used to sit there and go through, uh, I used to do a lot of the um, file and paperwork. I went from mailroom to executive, did a lot of stuff. So I used to go through a lot of archive and used to see that every year that Ruthless was declining with the different artists he had. You know, everybody know he had a whole lot of artists, you know. Yeah. You know, Frostbit, you know, Stefana's, you know, this, you know, Cold 187, you know, Above the Law, he had a lot. So when things didn't come to fruition with what he needed to keep the business running, I noticed on his timeline, he used to put out an album or EP. And every single EP he put out went platinum. So, and that was a story that I was, you know, was told that your father used to put out an album every year to make money for the, you know, for the company again and then sign a whole lot of artists again, go through the whole process. So yeah, yeah, he was he was making plenty of money. What were the other discrepancies in the movie that you noticed? <laughs> uh, you, you could point out a lot, but it was, it's, it was, it was a great movie. You, just, you could point out a lot, it was, it was made for, for the screen, big screen, but uh, it actually asked me is, uh, <laughs> I mean, it could be the Shook situation. It can. Well, let's talk about the Shook situation. Yeah. And I, I've talked to a number of people about that situation. Uh, I've talked to Arabian Prince. I've talked to uh, Cole and A7. I've talked to BG Knockout. The one thing they all told me, I, I also talked to, to DOC about it. And, you know, he was a little bit removed from the situation, but you know, he spoke on it. Uh, he, the one thing everyone said was that nobody put hands on Easy? Nah, nah. He like, was... like I think Arabian Prince even said, and this was off camera. You know, when we ran into each other uh, randomly, he said that he saw Eric like the same weekend that happened, and there was 
no marks on his face or, or anything else like that. Like, he was completely fine. Yeah, yeah. The story, most definitely. Very true, very true. The story was, you get a call, you want to go meet about a situation, yada, yada, yada. The way um, BG, BG said was that, he said that Dre called him, you know, to meet with him to, to sign over, you know, sign him, get him out the contracts or release him or whatever. But when he get there, Suge was there. So they was in a hotel room. Suge had dudes hiding in the closet under the bed. And when he get up there, when they, he get up there, Suge locked the door. All these cats come from under the bed and out the closet in the bathroom with guns. You know what I'm saying? And Dre was in there? Dre wasn't there. Oh, Dre wasn't there at nah. all? Nah. Dre set it up, though. Um, not too much as a hotel room, but a, a location. A location. But he was, he was, yeah, he he was, it wasn't him. a direct call from, from the fat man himself. You know, it was more so, you know, I'm kind of going to meet over there. That's the reasons why he did not go with Jake and John, which is his, who he rolls with, which is bodyguard. So just to be factual, um, get a call to go meet. And it's Suge and, you know, a couple of, you know, individuals, your, your roughhousers. Um, and nothing, maybe a little wrestling, sign a name, sign a name, sign Mickey Mouse. Kept signing Mickey Mouse, didn't, didn't sign his name. Then was threatened to say, hey, we have uh, individuals coming to your grandmother's house in Compton. So me, I, I significantly know that story, why I saw it, because the bodyguards are here, my daddy's not here. Like, why did they come? So as I got older, I understood what happened that night. You know what I mean? Like, why is the bodyguards here at the house, or popping up at the house, and my daddy's not here? Wait, so. So Easy's bodyguards mm -hmm. came to your house to my by themselves, house. Uh -huh. because Easy was, it was just all, yeah, it was Easy just, was just threatened by Suge. Yeah, this is what you're saying. Hey, sign this. Okay, well, I guess we're just gonna have to have some individuals come over here to such and such, such and such in Compton. You know, a little, you know, BS, rough rousing. You know, what I mean, no physical f fist fist fighting right. to sign a, over a contract. That was it. You know, and I, I significantly remember that as I got older and was told the story when th we find out after why did they come here? You know, I mean, my grandma, you know, she tells me, why did they come here? And I don't see my daddy. So as a kid, that's how I look at it. Why are they here? My daddy's not here. I only see y'all when my daddy come. You know, where's he at? And they were there to protect you and your grandmother. Yeah, they just popped up and see, just basically didn't even say nothing. And there was nothing in harm. Just, hey, we just <laughs> see how you guys doing. Hang just out come here over for here. a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm young, but like. Well, Where's daddy at? <laughs> the one thing that uh, the DOC told me was that... I, I can pretty much... Uh, I, I can't attest to it. I don't know for sure. But from what I know, yeah, you, you wasn't going to beat him up. You know what I mean? If you did, he, it would be a couple of dead cats in the world. And if he had to be one of them, you know what I mean? That's what I got from him. We don't know if he would have got him killed in a selfish process, but red, blue, or green, he was respected around every corner in Compton, even by the individual himself that, that they're speaking on, the fat man. So it was always put to this, this instance that you don't want to take it to this extent. You know what I mean? It, you, you, everybody's going to test me because I'm short, small, and all that. But once you really know deep and down the side or the individuals that know in the streets in the corner as far as in what really lies with it, you know what I mean? I don't gotta be physically me myself to do anything. Hey, okay, I could be small me myself, you know what I mean? It's, you know, small to a lot, but a giant to all, you know what I mean? So it that's that's, that's what Dio is saying is, you know, kinda, you know, straight down that line of exactly or why that really didn't happen. Cause you, it wouldn't have been no situation like that. It would have been a dead issue, if you know what I mean. So yeah, most definitely. Him kind of crying and me crying so you know what I mean it's just there was no more the words a couple of days later they tell me he died how did you feel when they, um, when they said that I mean did you know that he was gonna die with it no nah. the tubes no 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 uh-uh give me a second dog. to go through all you went through and your end result is being killed in a drive-by affiliation is like is like way beyond the aspect of 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 because you could have been here and left a, a way better mark.